So I've been having a ton of fun on the new titanium all-road bike from Blackheart Bike Company based here in Southern California. And so I figured it's about time to gather up my thoughts and deliver a full review on this modern classic that's as much a work of art as it is a capable all-road machine. Now, if you're interested in this timeless forever bike, that sees beyond the passing trends and marketing gimmicks, then I hope you'll stick around and find out what I like and dislike about the Blackheart All-Road Titanium Bike. Now to try and keep things organized and coherent, I'll break this review down into the basic specs of the bike and then get into the ride qualities that I experienced by discussing both the frame geometry as well as the frame material. And if you find these videos informative and useful, consider subscribing to the channel and joining our growing community of like-minded cyclists who value smiles per mile over miles per hour. Now for starters, this is a titanium frame. It uses double butted tubing to improve compliance and comfort, and of course to reduce weight. The frames themselves are manufactured in Taiwan, which as you probably know is a good thing, as most high-end frames, carbon, titanium, or otherwise, are manufactured there. Now, since this is a small company, I think it's also important to note that they go out of their way to be transparent about their safety protocols. The frame sets are independently tested to two industry standards once they arrive here in the States, and for that reason, all frames, forks, and seat posts come with a lifetime warranty against manufacturer defects. Now, aside from having mounts for three bottle cages, the frame doesn't have much in the way of rack, fenders, or other types of mounts, and this is by design, as the goal for this frame was to produce a road-biased, all-road bike with a super clean aesthetic and a timeless look, which they certainly accomplished. We also get partial internal cable routing with exit points at the top and bottom of the down tube. This of course keeps the look of the bike really clean, but it also keeps cable maintenance easy, unlike other frames with internal routing all the way back through the chainstays, which as you may know can be a nightmare to deal with. The logos aren't painted, but rather sandblasted onto the frame for some clean and subtle contrasting branding all around. And as with most titanium frames, the finish is left brushed and unpainted to show off that exotic corrosion proof material. A solid bike flex for sure. Now for convenience and robustness, you also get an English threaded bottom bracket to put your mind at ease when it comes to creaks and unwanted noises. And on the topic of cranks, you can fit up to a 5034 compact double or up to a single 44 tooth chainring if you decide to go one by. Now the frame also has all the modern accommodations including a 12 millimeter through axle and flat mounts for disc brakes. The frame set also comes with a matching titanium seat post if you want for maximum titanium goodness. Now up front you get a proprietary but pretty standard looking carbon fork with a tapered steerer for strength and stiffness as well as internal cable routing and through axle wheel mounting. Now as a whole the frame set can officially fit up to 700C by 38mm tires or 650B by 48mm tires which isn't crazy by today's standards but far wider than any race or endurance road bike would allow. On my scale, with no pedals, this Ultegra RX 2x build with Hunt Alloy 650B wheels and IRC Boken 48mm tires set up tubeless comes in at a very respectable 21 pounds on the dot or roughly 9.5 kilograms in a size 52. Now as far as builds go, the company offers just the frame set as well as 1x or 2x builds with all types of different group sets, wheels, and finishing kits available. Or if you want to go completely custom, they're more than happy to help you build up the bike of your dreams with generous discounts on components with the purchase of a frame set. Now with minimal mounting options for bags and racks and a pretty traditional frame design with no sloping top tubes and the very lively geometry, which I'll get into in a minute, you might be thinking that this is starting to sound like a proper road bike, just with clearance for wider tires. Now while there may be some truth to that, there's way more that's gone into the design of this bike. The owner of the company, Zach, made it clear that what he wanted in an all-road bike was actually pretty hard to find on the market. Now, sure, there are plenty of adventure bikes claiming to be able to do everything from fast group rides to long solo gravel adventures, but as with most things, there's a spectrum that spans the two extremes. Speaking with Zach about the bike, he's well aware that there really isn't truly a one-bike-fits-all solution for every type of riding, and so he hasn't claimed to have created one like so many of the big brands have claimed. In his own words, if I tried to make a bike for everyone, I'd end up making a bike for no one. And that really kind of sums up this bike. On the spectrum of drop bar bikes, this bike is clearly road oriented at heart, but has accommodations for some off-road exploration. The geometry, which really takes a lot of cues from a proper road frame, is somewhat of a mix between racy and endurance road geometry, but of course with clearance for wide tires. Now the elements of this frame that deviate from a traditional road geometry and help it to excel off-road 
are things like a slightly higher than typical stack at 580 and a marginally longer wheelbase at 1019 millimeters on an average sized 56 centimeter frame. However, with a head tube angle of 72 degrees, short-ish chain stays at 422 and a pretty low trail figure of 59, again on a size 56, it's certainly not claiming to be a stable, plow through the chunk kind of adventure bike. Now at five foot eight, I've been riding this bike in my preferred size of 52 centimeters for a couple of weeks now, and the handling, not the ride feel, but the handling actually really reminds me of my 2015 Roubaix, but with much wider tires and a bit more inclined to go off road. Now, one of the first things that caught my attention was actually the toe overlap that I got on this frame size, which I also used to get on my Roubaix. And it's something that I don't experience anymore on my longer, slacker, specialized Diverge. Now, to me, toe overlap is only a nuisance at slow speeds when steering inputs are larger. It's never been a big deal, for me at least, as once you're up to speed, your steering input should be relatively small. Generally, my take on toe overlap is that if your toes are rubbing the front tire when riding up at speed, you've probably got bigger things to worry about. Anyways, after riding it for a while and staring at geometry charts and comparing it to previous bikes that I've ridden, I'm really inclined to call the Blackheart Titanium bike a gravel bike for roadies. But at the same time, I don't want to pigeonhole the bike into that niche. Now I can definitely see getting this bike set up with two wheel sets and leaving a fast 700C set on the bike most of the time for dedicated road rides, but also having a set of big 650B chunkers on reserve for when you start to crave a good old adventure in the dirt. Now to me, it's pretty clear that it's a really capable road machine. It's quick and responsive, and even though I don't do any fast group rides, mostly because I'm not fast and I prefer to ride solo, this bike really inspired me to push harder as it's really easy to throw around side to side and it gets up to speed and carries speed really well. Climbing out of the saddle feels natural and there's no front end wandering due to the relatively steep head tube angle. Really no surprises on 700C wheels on the road. The bike just handles beautifully. It's very intuitive and I never felt like I had to fight the bike to get it going where I wanted. Through corners, the turn in is quick, but it holds a line pretty effortlessly. Now as a dedicated road bike, there's not much else to say. It's fast, it's flickable, it's sleek, and it's really smooth. But more on that in just a minute. Now for me, I actually spent most of my time on this bike on the 650B by 48 setup, since I was really more interested in getting a sense for how a road-oriented adventure bike like this would fare off-road. Now I have to say, on the dirt, it's really capable, surprisingly capable. But of course, with the geometry being so lively, you're also a bit more susceptible to being pushed around by the terrain. Now I found that when things get really rough, you do need to be more aware of your line choice as things can go awry pretty quickly if you're not paying attention. But for the record, I never crashed this bike, but I definitely had a couple of close calls on my normal test loop that I wasn't expecting. In general, when the going got rough, I started to get ping-ponged around the trail and had to really reel it in and micromanage the steering inputs to get where I wanted to go. Again, this is a case of considering the design intent. By definition, you can't have a lively and agile road bike that's also super predictable and stable on chunky dirt descents. It's just simple contradicting dynamics. Now, in the case of the Blackheart, the bias leans more toward road geometry, so it's not gonna ride like a stable, long wheel-based touring bike when you go off-road. It's not supposed to. Now, this is a good place to mention that on the chunkier terrain, the frame material really got a chance to shine. The titanium frame is pretty unique in that it is a metal frame, so it's not gonna have the same ride feel and the durability concerns of a carbon bike. But at the same time, its strength to weight ratio is far superior to steel. Now, roughly speaking, titanium is equally as strong as steel, but half the weight and also half the stiffness. So to make a balanced titanium frame that's not overly flexy, manufacturers usually use larger diameter tubing than their thin tubed steel counterparts. Now the result is a stiff frame that offers efficient power transfer with enough give to yield a really supple ride. Now the best way I can explain the titanium ride feel is that it offers a muted ride that sort of masks the small amplitude, high frequency road chatter. It's like you know the road or trail is still bumpy below your tires, but it really takes the edge off and the bumps aren't as sharp by the time they reach the handlebars, pedals, and saddle. Comfort-wise, it's top-notch and really supple owing mostly to the frame material. It's definitely got a different ride feel than carbon, but it's tough to pin down. I'd say it more closely resembles the feel of a well-designed steel frame, but a bit tighter and sharper, if those adjectives make sense. Now, by no means is it going to absorb a big hit on a downhill section of dirt trail. After all, it's still a very stiff frame. 
but the inherent material properties just help to smooth everything out, which is really nice over a long ride as you don't get as fatigued as quickly. Well, at this point, it should be very clear. I really liked riding this bike. Now, it may sound strange, but I'd say that the Blackheart Titanium bike invites you to stay in the moment as it encourages you to push harder on the road and it forces you to think about your line choice when the going gets rough. It's a really fun experience and I'm a big fan. So is there anything I wasn't a huge fan of? It's tough to say, but maybe just a couple of minor things. Now first, I couldn't help noticing that the fork seemed a bit stiff for my preference. Especially when descending chunkier terrain, the front end felt a bit jarring at times, whereas other forks I've ridden would offer a bit more compliance. Now, I do understand that many road cyclists actually do prefer a really stiff, super precise front end, which again is who I believe this bike is ultimately designed for. Now for me personally, I was willing to trade some of that razor sharp precision for a bit more compliance in the front end. But clearly this is personal preference. Now along the same vein, the other minor thing is that the seat post is surprisingly wide at 31.6 millimeters. Now I have noticed this trend on many other titanium bikes as well. Whereas many adventure bikes are specking thinner seat posts for a bit of added compliance, it seems that a lot of the titanium bikes are sticking with a wider seat post diameter. Now perhaps it's because the titanium material is itself more flexible and requires a larger diameter to produce an equivalent stiffness. But I did note a bit of a lack of vertical give in the saddle area. Now perhaps a thinner seat post could offer a bit more compliance without giving up too much in the way of road performance. But again, this is a personal preference more than anything. So at the end of the day, who is this bike really for? Well, while I think anyone who's interested in a capable one bike drop bar solution would certainly enjoy this bike, my gut reaction is telling me that it would really appeal to a more seasoned roadie who might be starting to come around to the gravel trend and maybe wants to start exploring some local trails or doing some mixed terrain rides to change things up a bit. The owner of the Blackheart Titanium bike, however, is not someone who is willing to compromise road speed and efficiency. It's for a cyclist who doesn't mind doing a bit of micromanaging on the steering inputs when navigating technical off-road terrain and in turn enjoys being rewarded with a really lively and nimble bike. And of course, this bike is certainly for someone who truly appreciates the sheer beauty of it. With the subtle branding and the positive message, the Blackheart Titanium All-Road Bike also appeals to a cyclist who values the timeless aesthetic and classic look of the frame set more so than the newest cutting edge carbon design, which may very well be obsolete in a few years. The owner of the Blackheart all-road bike can see beyond the passing trends and appreciates this forever bike with the knowledge that it will never crack, never fade, never corrode, and never go out of style. Once again, I wanna thank Zach, the owner of Blackheart Bike Company, for letting me enjoy this bike for a couple of weeks and for giving this small YouTube channel a chance to represent the average cyclist. And for all of you who have stuck around this long, Thanks again for watching and subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.